And after a deep and thorough contemplation, uh, it became clear to me that Gary Davis and I were a generation apart, uh, spoke a different language, yeah, what he called world citizen, I called earth person, what he called the uh, world government of the world citizens, I called earth people. Naturally, I have a deep leadership streak. And uh, to be authentic, I must be free to speak to my own generation in my own language. Yeah, 1960s counterculture language. Uh, Krishnamurti, he didn't identify with the Theosophical Society. And I didn't identify with uh, Gary Davis's uh, World Government for World Citizens. And furthermore, as a baby boomer growing up in Haight-Ashbury, uh, I've been a life-long a advocate of non-addictive theogenic drugs. Yeah, uh, wise use of a theogenic drugs. Well, uh, so considering the world government trip, I surmise my lifestyle... Uh, and his would be unbridgeable, even if unspoken. And uh, look, it as an attractive young 20-year-old, I was comfortable living by my wits if it enhanced my chance to survive or world travel. Uh, my lifestyle honors prostitution, free trade, sexual services. I've been both the prostitute and on the receiving end, you know, glamorous Thai bar girls. Yeah, the receiving end. I've always been upfront about that in my books and so on. And considering my free-spirited attitude towards sex, psychedelic drugs, I surmise that my lifestyle would probably create a scandal in the more traditional milieu of Gary Davis. So I chose to do my own thing. And from a grand perspective, uh, though our generational differences are mostly surface differences, it deep, uh, deep features of our soul, uh, Essentially, Gary Davis and I are kindred spirits. Same goal, to teach humanity about earth people. Or as he would say, to uh, teach about world citizens. I'll always remember my last private conversation with Gary Davis. Yeah, it was Earth Day 2007 at his... Uh, Headquarters in Washington, D.C., yeah. And uh, as far as I know, Gary Davis and I are the only two humans to ever become voluntarily stateless for life as a spiritual imperative, so that covers like 73 years. Two cool cats in 73 years on this path were rare birds. Fortunately, we're gifted song and dance men, and you know, with abundant gift of gab, we've been able to talk our way across national borders. We're an unrelenting, walking, talking protest against all war, all state terrorism. There's been so much publicity. It's just been September 11th, World Trade Center. Jet planes crashing into the World Trade Center. I've watched endless hours of the commentary. Nobody ever talks about the Afghans killed in the last 20 years. It's all, I mean, the Yanks got it half right. Yeah, the weaving, grieving mothers. And what about the grieving Afghan mothers? Hundreds of thousands slaughtered by Americans. Iraq, Vietnam. What about those people? Get it all right. Don't get it half-baked. 
all your your heroes. Yeah, well, they're heroes too. They're Earth people. They all get born from loving mother. They're just so fed up with this one-sided bullshit view. The Western world looks at the rest of civilization. Well, look, thousands of folks switch their nationalities like every year all the time. Why? To save money on taxes. Yeah, lots of benefits for having an alternative national residence. In fact, there's a backlog. I just read like 6,000 Americans... They want to dump their American citizenship, but they can't process the people that want to jump ship fast enough. Oh, you want a new country? You want to switch nations? Oh, yeah, Malta. Fine. You want a Maltese passport, residency, citizenship, the whole country? No problem. If you're filthy rich. Or they euphemistically call this uh, economic citizenship. You know, yeah, we'll take about three million off you, and then you know, issue you know, like a passport that costs a hundred dollars to print. Oh, Cambodia, you want to? They make getting a new country and a new passport even more straightforward. Well, Cambodia. 